Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh guys First and foremost I want to thank you for bringing me up to 50,000 subscribers May Allah keep me sincere and keep you guys uh, watching my videos and finding them interesting Because obviously we do them to, to benefit the community at large And to try to educate people about Islam etc Now having said that I wanted to make a quick quick video Maybe about 4-5 or five minutes But obviously I like to speak a little bit more than I say I do About inheritance and the coherence of inheritance now, in a nutshell, um, there are some some basically attacks against Islam through Orientalists on um, the fractions or the proportions of inheritance left behind. Now, I believe that they're very f foolish attacks, actually, and, and that's why they're not really used that much, frankly. Not many people at attack Islam like this because, um, logically, it's not a strong argument and they know it. But if you look at chapter like 4, verse 11 onwards, it talks about inheritance and inheritance distribution yeah and also the hadith tells us how to kind of divide the wealth now the question is this what if what if the inheritance distribution goes over one what if it goes over one uh or what if i have so in other words if you add up all the fractions it becomes an impro what you call an improper fraction where the numerator is more than the, no the denominator what do you do in that situation um, and really and truly, this is actually an established thing in the Jewish in jurisprudence. So, in other words, Islam has a way of dealing with inheritance if 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 it becomes an improper fraction. So, let me give you an example. This is actually a very well known example. I've tried to write this down because um, obviously it's it's a notable example. It's called Al Minbariya. This is one example. It's called Al Minbariya. And the reason why it's called al minbariya is because Ali ibn Abi Talib was on the minbar of the, pul the pulpit and he kind of gave instructions on how to deal with this situation. And we know Ali ibn Abi Talib is an extension of what the Prophet ﷺ told us to follow. Um, so his, his rulings, the Sahaba, they knew how to deal with this. So for instance, we know that a mother gets um, one sixth and some, a mother and a father both get one sixth in certain circumstances and the mother can get one third in certain circumstances in terms of inheritance. If you have uh, three, let's say three daughters or more, or three daughters, four daughters, five daughters, then they get two thirds of the inheritance and a wife gets one eighth of the inheritance. But when you add all of that up together, it becomes an improper fraction. Okay, so when you add up, like for example, one sixth, um, one sixth plus one sixth plus two thirds plus one eighth, it becomes an improper fraction. So the question is what to do in that situation. Okay, so al minbariya would dictate because remember this comes from Ali ibn Abi Talib, and there's something called al Umariya as well, which comes from. Uh, these are all things that come from Sahaba and and established precedents from the time of the Prophet. So what happens? What you would do is you would change the improper fraction, yeah. So for instance, say, usually you would have you know, the common denominator, the, like, the lowest common multiple of all of the fractions that I've mentioned to you, like one third, uh, sorry, two thirds, one eighth, etc would be 24 okay that would be the lowest common multiple but that would be changed to 27 now what that would mean so the denominator now would change from 24 to 27 and uh, every other person would get a um a, a lesser amount so for example the mother would get rather than rather than one sixth mother and father would get rather than one sixth they'd get four out of 27 which is equivalent to about 14.8 percent and the the two daughters, or let's say two or three daughters, whatever it may be, uh, let's say if it's two daughters or three daughters, whatever, then they will get um, twenty nine point six percent rather than uh, per, per 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 one of them, rather than thirty three point three percent because they give it two thirds otherwise, and the wife will get three out of twenty seven, which is eleven percent, rather than twelve point five percent, which would be one eighth. So in other words, in the case where it goes over one, yeah, that's what would happen. Now, the question is, how comes it can go over one? How can there be an improper fraction? Well, the, the answer is this. It can go over one because there's a mathematical way of dealing with how it can go over one. Just like it, when it goes under one, right? So, for example, if a man leaves behind three daughters, yeah, and no one else, a man leaves behind three daughters and no one else. So what's going to happen? It's going to be two thirds. What's the third? What's, what's going to happen to that remaining third? So that remaining third will go back to the daughters. Okay, it'll go back to the daughters. So in other words, if a man leaves behind, you're not going to throw that money away. Do you get it? 
So the point really I'm trying to make to you is there is a mechanism of dealing with if it goes over and under one. And the premise of, okay, it has to be one, otherwise it's mathematically incoherent, is a false premise because the estate stays the same. So for example, someone has £100. That £100 does not, is not required to go up or down. Someone leaves behind £100. And for example, in the case of Mimbaria, yeah, the 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 uh, we said in a normal situation, say that the the the, the wife would get twelve point five percent. In this situation, she'd get eleven percent. So it would go down if if it goes over one. If it goes under one, they'll get more money. So depending upon that situation, whether it goes over and under one, the inheritance can will um, will vary accordingly. And someone will say, okay, well then that's unfair or whatever. But that's actually inbuilt within the system of Islam or the inheritance system. So, uh, in a nutshell, there's always a way of dealing with it. And the fractions, they do add up together. And you will be able to find the long, uh, a, a lowest common multiple in most cases. And the, the, the truth is, in most cases, it will be near to one if you add up these fractions together. In most cases, in most scenarios, it will be close to one. Anyways, I hope you understand what I'm saying here. Um... And this is a very weak attack anyways. And that's why lots of people don't even try and use it because they know that this is an easy answer to that question. But just in case people were struggling because I had a conversation with one person in Speaker's Corner before about this and I think a lot of people got confused. But this is what happens if it goes over one. These are, these are the mechanisms by which and through which Islam has facilitated for us to be able to um, basically reason the inheritance, the Islamic inheritance. Thank you one more time for bringing me up to 50,000 subscribers. I don't usually do uh, videos in my car if I'm doing it for YouTube. I only do it usually if I'm doing it for Instagram because I'm trying to become a little bit more active on my Instagram, which you can find a link somewhere. Click the button and you can follow me, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.